All right, we've started the recording. Sharing the screen. Let's sit there. All right, can you guys see my screen now? Uh, sorry yes, if I didn't respond to roll. I can't hear out of my right ear right now. What's your name, Pellegrin? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got you here. Right. As long as you're on the list when I type your name in, uh, I get you. All right, so we need home page and All right, so um, this is, um, we've put individual sonnets um, the other day, but uh, this is our first sonnet sequence. Uh, now, a sonnet sequence is uh, built up around a theme. So I kind of can't call what Shakespeare put out a sonnet sequence. He's got 150 sonnets, some of which interrelate, but a lot of which don't, and there doesn't seem to be an overall flow. Um, and they not only have a theme, which is usually love, but usually there's something of a plot. Uh, so uh, normally it's a guy, although um, uh, was it Elizabeth Barrett Browning uh, turned this around when she wrote her sonnet sequence to her husband, uh, Robert Browning. And uh, so, you know, women can write sonnets, it's just, uh, Typically, they weren't given the opportunity to do so. Uh, so uh, anyway, within the sonnet, normally the theme is some dude loves a woman. Uh, and uh, the plot is uh, he sees her, they meet, um, they have rough times, and then maybe they get to a happy place, maybe they don't. Uh, that's probably all we need to know about a sonnet sequence. OK. so. Um, Sir Philip Sidney, I have a picture. This dude. There we go. So looking a uh, very uh, Renaissance. 50, 60, 70, 80. Uh, lived to the ripe old age of 32, which is half my age. <laughs> um, memento mori, y'all. Um, okay, so he calls himself Astrophel. Astro uh, from the Greek word for star. Phi, fell from philos, which is uh, the big word for love, and Stella is from the Latin word for star. So she is star, he is star lover. Um, now notice also the UV confusion in uh, this period, um, which goes back to Latin. In La oh, see, upon with the V. Um, so the U and V, they're actually two different shapes for the same letter. Uh, and U was, uh, for many centuries, uh, like Y, which can be sometimes a vowel, 
and sometimes a consonant. And they would just put, it looks like to me, they would put the V at the beginning, V shape and the U shape if it's in the middle, regardless of uh, what letter we would consider it. So what else? At some point, uh, the, the letters bifurcated, they divided. And uh, the U shape was always to be printed uh, with the uh, vowel uh, and the V shape always would be the consonant and we started calling it V instead of U. All right, does that make sense? So a little bit of typography for you to start your day off right. Loving in truth and fain in verse my love to show. Ouch. <laughs> oh, let's, let's try the next line because that's got 12 syllables. That she, dear she, might take some pleasure of my pain. Oh my God. Pleasure might cause her read, reading might make her know. Wow. This is a sonnet with 12 syllables. How did I not notice that before? And maybe I, maybe I do this every quarter. Not at the first sight, not with a dribbled shot. Love gave the wound, which while I breathe will bleed, but no, but known work did in tract of time proceed. All right, so we seem to be uh, moving, maybe he did extra long lines for his very first sonnet. Uh, and then he sh starts shortening them back to the uh, regulation 10 syllables uh, and uh, 14 lines and iambic pentameter is our normal meter. All right, and you can tell. So uh, this is iambic hexameter. So, uh, wow, just admire that for a minute. <laughs> okay. So here we start with, remember we divided up into eight lines, two, four, six, eight. The octet and the sestet, the six lines, stay, blows, way, throws, fight, right. So uh, we have then uh, subdivided into that. One, two, three quatrains and one couplet. And normally we expect some kind of theme shift uh, between the octet and sextet and between each um, quatrain and the couplet. Loving in truth and fain in verse my love to show that she, dear she, might take some pleasure of my pain. Yeah, this is very um, popular theme in love all the way from uh, this to uh, love hurts, which is uh, love hurts. <clears throat> so I, I'm in love with her. You know, starting with the uh, first side of her, we're starting with him already being in love with her. So that's where our plot picks up. And here's his plot. Uh, I'm going to write this, why? Because I love and I want her to take pleasure of my pain. Uh, Pleasure. Oh, so he loves me. Well, that's kind of sweet. And he wrote me these sonnets. Uh, so uh, knowledge, wait, pleasure might cause her read. So uh, he loves, wants his verse to show her. She'll take pleasure in his pain. Pleasure will cause her to read. Reading will make her know. Knowledge might pity will and pity grace obtain. And so um, Grace in uh, the tradition of courtly love, your lady's gift of grace is a uh, kind of a nice way of saying uh, that she'll have sex with you. So if she feels sorry for me and has sex with me out of pity, uh, then I'll take that because I'm a dude. So his pains lead to her pleasure, leads to her reading, leads to her knowledge, leads to her pity, leads to her Grace, and I will get lucky. Boy, this sounds like a pinky in the brain plot. Um, so uh, this is the first four lines. It makes up uh, uh, one thought. 
Uh, next four lines. I sought fit words to paint the blackest face of woe. So I'm trying to write and write about how terrible it is uh, that I'm so in love with her. Uh, studying inventions fine, her wits to entertain, off turning others' leaves to see if thence would flow some fresh and fruitful showers upon my sunburned brain. So leaves are the leaves in a book, of course. He's reading other people's uh, son sonnets, and, um, but he's not going to be overly influenced. Or he wouldn't be writing uh, 12 syllable sonnet lines. Um, but words came out, and I think that's another four. Yes. Uh, so third quatrain and kind of the shift that comes at the sestet. Invention, nature's child, fled stepdame studies blows. So um, inventing good lines for a poem is something that nature does for you. Nature is his muse in this case, uh, but study makes invention run away. I'm just copying other people's lines at this point, uh, and I'm not coming up with anything good. Uh, so my invention, all this studying is making me not be able to write. Uh, and others feet, and this means uh, the feet of a line, the measures, I seem to have frozen. So uh, loving in truth and fain in verse, my love to show. Uh, that's got six measures, but we could also say six feet. Others' feet seem but strangers in my way, so I'm stumbling over the, uh, the meter. And great with child to speak, I'm pregnant with my uh, poetry here, and helpless in my throes, and this is, uh, he's in labor to bring forth these uh, great lines of poetry, biting my true word pen, and we finish up with this couplet. Uh, beating myself for spite, fool, said my muse to me, Look in thy heart and write. Uh, so this may be the first poem I know of that calls for invention and originality. Uh, this really becomes a theme in the Romantic era, which we will not get to until next part. But you can see a little foreshadowing of it here. Okay, so uh, number one uh, is an overarching poem um, about the whole sonnet sequence. Then we get into the details. Not at the first sight, not with the dribbled shot, dribbled shot. Love gave the wound which while I breathe will bleed, but none worth did in tract of time proceed to five degrees it had full conquest got. So, uh, there's this theory of uh, love at first sight where you just are smitten uh, the first time you see him or her. You say, this wasn't that. But over time, as I got to know her a little bit, uh, I got this wound by love. And remember Cupid, Amor, uh, the little god with the arrows. And uh, so he's got one of Cupid's arrows making him misery, miserable. I saw in light. Okay, so first, this is the process. I saw her. I liked her. I liked but loved not. I loved but straight did not what love decree. So I saw her first, then I liked her. Uh, then I loved her, but I didn't do anything about it. I just kept it all to myself. At length to love degrees, love's degrees, I forced agreed. Yet with repining at so partial lot, now even that footstep of lost liberty is gone. And now like slave-born Muscovites, I call it praise to suffer tyranny. And now I employ the remnant of my wit to make myself believe that all is well while feeling with a skill, uh, with a feeling skill, I paint my hell. So um, anyway, we get to love. We start obeying love finally. Uh, and then now I'm love's slave, like somebody living in Moscow is the slave to the czar. And I'm under this tyranny of love and her. Yeah, love conquers all of us is what Virgil originally meant. When he wrote Omnia Winket Amor. 
Some lovers speak when they their muses entertain of hopes begot by fear, of what not desires, of force of, of what not desires, of force of heavenly beams infusing hellish pain, of living deaths, dire wounds, fair storms, freezing fires. Oh my God, what do we call all these things online for? Living death, dear wound, fair storm, freezing fire. Okay, this, my dear people, is what we call oxymorons. And uh, you'd see how they quickly become oxymoronic. Um, it, it, you know, it's a thing, use it sparingly. Uh, once you fill up a line with it, you get a little, oh, it gets a little old. So um, love hurts, but it also is something I want, is what he's saying with all of this. Uh, someone is song in uh, Jove and Jove's strange tales of tires bordered with bulls and swans powdered with golden rain and humbler wit to shepherds pipe retires yet hiding royal blood full oft in rural veins. So he says, I wish I could become like Jove uh, who uh, got lucky a lot by disguising himself and coming to the human women who attracted him. Um, Yet hiding royal blood full oft in rural vein to sum a sweet plaint, the sweetest style of words. While tears pour out his ink and sighs breathe out his words, his paper pale despair and pain his pen doth move. I can speak what I feel and feel as much as they, but think that all the map of my state I display when trembling voice brings forth that I do Stella love. So um, that is, you can kind of read this out loud and the spelling irregularities uh, don't aren't quite as uh, you know problematic. So uh, all of this is saying uh, kind of back to that original theme. I'm looking at other people's leaves. So I'm looking at Ovid, all of his poems, uh, blah blah blah, and and then uh, really this whole uh, sonnet was wasted except for the last four words. I do still love. Uh, that's the only important thing he has to say here. But how sad steps, O moon, thou climbest the skies, how silently and with how wan a face, wan means pale. And uh, the moon is sad, why? Because I am sad. Uh, this is called the pathetic fallacy, and it is kind of pathetic. <laughs> uh, what may it be even in heavenly place that busy archer his sharp arrow tries? So, um, would a more uh, Cupid be to Cellini? Maybe, uh, I mean, uh, is it Cellini or Artemis? No. Uh, Cause Artemis is immune to love. Um, so maybe Cellini. Anyway, um, too much mythology. Okay, so the first quatrain, uh, the moon is sad because the moon too is in love. Um, and the moon, you know, is for lovers. Uh, sure, if that long with love acquainted eyes can judge of love. Now fillest a lover's case, I read in thy looks, thy languished grace. To me that feel the like thy state descries, that even a fellowship, O moon, tell me, is constant love theme there but want of wit? So uh, he, they think he's a half wit because uh, he's just constantly in love with her. Can't you ever talk about anything else, dude? Um, are beauties there as proud as here they be? Do they above love to be loved? And yet those lovers scorn that love doth possess. So she wants to be loved, but then she wants to, uh, you know, lord it over me and not be moved. I'm not getting any grace. Just terrible, terrible. Uh, do they call virtue there ungratefulness? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, so what is virtue? It's not having the sex. And what the guys uh, who are 
young flame very much in love want the sex so they say well you're being ungrateful by uh, saying you want to wait till marriage i bought you a hot dog you know um some things never change uh do women call ingratitude a virtue so she would call it um i will be ostracized from my host society if i have sex with you and get pregnant it will ruin my life. Uh, so no, I'm not having the sex with you. All right. So now he is, did we talk about apostrophes? Uh, usually we mean the little, what are you doing? It's not happy with me. The little sign, uh, single quote mark we use for, um, abbreviations and possession, but that's not what this apostrophe is. It's an address. Oh, here we go. Address to a person, place, or thing, a person that's not present, or a bunch of people are, in this case, he's talking to sleep. Come sleep, oh sleep, the certain knot of peace, the baiting place of wit, the bomb of woe. So um, sleep number one gives you peace. He likes these lists. Number two uh, is where you get your inspiration. So your next witty thing, well, you wake up with it, have a pad by your bed so you can write it down. Uh, the bomb of woe, number three. Number four, the poor man's wealth. Number five, the prisoner's release. Number six, the indifferent judge between high and low. So there's the first quatrain, a prayer to peace. The shield of proof shield me from out the prees of these fierce darts despair at me doth throw. Oh, making me those civil wars to cease. I will good tribute pay. So what will I pay to sleep if thou do so? Uh, thou take thou of me, uh, number one, smooth pillows. Two, sweetest bed. Three, a chamber deaf of noise. Four, blind of light. So it's dark, it's quiet. I've got a comfortable bed. I've got one of those pillows that creepy guy sells on a late night TV. Comes on about two in the morning. I got a pillow for you and you won't have to be awake watching this tomorrow. Have y'all seen the creepy pillow ads? <laughs> um, seen some weird ones. Yeah, right. A rosy garland. Oh, okay. Uh, we did another one. And a weary head. So I'm very weary. I'm very tired. This thing is making me sleepy, guys. I don't know if I can make it to the end of class, but I will try to soldier on. Um, I don't want to give you false hope. <laughs> if these things as being thine in right move, not thy heavenly grace, thou shalt see in me livelier than elsewhere. This is the number one reason you should put me to sleep. So you can Stella's image see because I will be dreaming about Stella. Oh, that's it. We only made it to 39 of these. And we've lost our place. Here we go. Let's right, see what's up with Thomas Campion. Put in Elizabeth's time and Jacobin, uh, that's uh, King James. Uh, writes in Latin as well as English, so you know he's awesome. Um, he wants to avoid rhyme and our system of meter stressed and unstressed. He builds uh, instead on the length of uh, lines, which um, Longfellow also did. Uh, so instead of stressed and unstressed, long syllable and short, this is the forest primeval. So long, short, short, long, short, short, long, long, uh, in that case. Um, so it does happen in English. Uh, we're capable of doing that. Okay, so uh, as you might figure from his uh, Latin abilities, he um, reads Latin as well as writing it. And this is, I told you it was unusual to call for originality. Shakespeare almost never wrote an original plot that he made up. He found his plot somewhere else. And the idea was to rewrite them and do them better. Uh, that's where your creativity lies, not in coming up with something brand spanking new. I mean, um, you know, uh, in his mind, he was doing what 
uh, TV writers do. And they never come up with something new. It's got to be uh, the Simpsons meet Family Guy. Uh, and then you, you have a, what you call an elevator pitch. You can give it to somebody in two or three sentences. Uh, and it makes sense because it's based on something else, but we did it better. So here is Catullus V. Catullus was a young poet who uh, brashly came into, um, into um, Rome and he wrote, this is not a sonnet, it is an elegy. An elegy, thanks in large part to Catullus, uh, he wrote an elegy for his dead brother and this becomes kind of associated with uh, de death poetry, but at the time it was a versatile um, meter. The odd numbered lines are dactylic hexameter. That means dactyls, we wamus, long, short, short. Um, the even numbered lines are dactylic pentameter, which means uh, they're just the same, but with five of those instead of six. Uh, and so you would have an even number of lines. Let's see how many this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. That doesn't seem right. Thirteen. It's almost a po uh, uh, a sonnet, isn't it? It's weird. Yeah, it's an e e odd no e odd number of lines. So um, anyway, they were varying in length. Some could be as short as. Uh, well, if it's two or four lines, it's called an epigram. So uh, a son, uh, elegy is at least six lines. <sighs> what else? Um, oh, he fell in love with this woman named Claudia. And in his poetry that he made to be read out loud in front of groups to save her reputation, uh, he changed it from Claudia to Lesbia, which is uh, both of them are dactyls, so they scan the same. And then when you're by yourself with her, um, then you uh, would drop the pretense and use her name. So um, let us live, my Lesbia, and let us love. That's Carpe Diem, right? Uh, suns may set and rise again for us when the short light has once set, remains to be slept the sleep of one unbroken night. That's memento mori. Um, and therefore back to carpe diem. Well, it's also tempus fugit. Short light has set. Uh, so it's a short time, tempus fugit. And after that, we will be dead a long time, memento mori. And this is the way that usually works. Tempus fugit, therefore, uh, momentum mori, time flies, we will be dead, therefore we should love tonight. And uh, let's get started with a thousand kisses, then a hundred kisses, then a thousand, then a hundred. Uh, so you can see um, it kind of degenerates into a 19 year old sex fantasy. Um, and so Campion has a lot to work with, but then he has an area where he can go beyond. So uh, stanza one, is based on uh, these first several lines, but then he drops the rest and says, I can make it better. My sweetest lesbia, let us live in love, and though the sager sorts our deeds we prove, let us not weigh them. So uh, smart people are telling us, don't be in love, you silly young people, or in his case, uh, the case of uh, uh, Catullus, he was young, she was middle-aged, which is kind of what we would, what the kids now would call a cougar, I don't know what the word was for it back then. Heaven's great lamps do dive into their west and straight again revive. So the sun and moon uh, go down at night, but come up the next day. But soon as once said is our little light, then must we sleep with one, one ever during night. Okay, so second stanza, this is innovative on his part. If all would lead their lives in love like me, oh, lead their lives in love like me. What do we call that? All these L's. Alliteration. Yes, very good. So uh, one of our terms that we uh, put out the, a few days ago, uh, be able to identify those things when you see them. Uh, so if everybody would just be uh, lovers like me, then bloody swords and armor should not be. No drum nor trumpet, peaceful sleep should move unless alarm came from the camp of love. 
but fools do live and waste their little light and seek with pain their ever during night. So as the old hippies would say back in my day, make love, not war. Um, where are you finding out? Uh, this idea that love and war are opposites is fairly new and a weird innovation, uh, which if you've ever driven by any bar on any uh, Saturday night and anywhere in Louisiana, uh, there are a couple of people out there fighting over some guy or some woman, depending on who the people are and what they like. But they're always going to be fighting. Why? Because love leads to anger. Uh, but they don't get that. Uh, when timely death, my life and fortune ends, so memento mori, let my, my hearse be vexed with mourning friends, but let all lovers rich in triumph come, and we sleep plus times grace my happy tomb. So he wants lovers to come to his tomb and make out on it. Um, I grew up across the street uh, from uh, what was the library uh, by the Temple Baptist Church where it was. There's some parish offices there now, but it was right next to the cemetery, which is a block away from uh, Tech Campus. And people do go to that place and make out, or they did back in the 60s. Um, so anyway, he wants uh, lovers to come out and uh, make love on his tomb. Yeah, that would be great. And let's be a close up thou my little light and crown with love my ever during night. So he'll die happy if uh, she uh, buries him and if people come to celebrate love there. And who knows, uh, maybe, let's see, Tumpus Campion's grave. Seeing it, do you? I think he'd have a web page if he wanted us to go there. Um, let's see if they say. Maybe they'll say it in the wiki. Uh, but it's already died. He died 1620. The children that he announced. Um, hmm. So he was a doctor. Okay, so uh, here he's writing uh, in the voice of a young woman who has given her uh, gift of grace, and now she is pregnant and my love hath vowed he will forsake me. Oh, my love, he uh, lost interest and ran away. And I am already sped for other promise did he make me when he had my maidenhead. That's a note, maidenhead is a term for uh, losing your virginity. Uh, if such danger be in playing and sport must to earnest turn, I will no go more go a main. So in May Day, it was like uh, prom without the uh, fancy clothes and uh, limousines. Uh, the young people would go out into the fields and get up to what young people do in the fields. And so we went May Day, and now it's June, and I am pregnant, and he's nowhere to be seen. So play has turned into a disaster, uh, which is one reason women were so reluctant to have the sex uh, before marriage anyway. And I've foreseen what has ensued, and what now with pain I pray, I'm unhappy then I had eschewed this unkind event of love. So love hadn't done her any good. Maids foreknow their own undoing, but fear not till all is done when a man alone is willing. So you're with him, he's willing, honey, I'm so hot for you. And she forgets all about the consequences. Dissembling wretch to gain thy pleasure, what didst thou not vow and swear? So he was all full of promises, right? Um, so didst thou rob me of the treasure which so long I held so dear? Now thou provest to me a stranger, such as the vile guise of men when a woman is in danger. And uh, in this case, it's in danger of uh, having the sex. 
The heart is nearest to misfortune that will trust a feigned tongue. When flattering men our loves importune, they intend us deepest wrong. So you write me all these lovely sonnets. But then what happens when I get pregnant? I mean, he did die without a wife or child. So how many women did he leave along the way? We don't know. If this shame of love's betraying, but this once I cleanly shun, I will no more go a maying. So no more maying for her. Uh, she's going to have a baby. And I talked about the loot last time, right? It's the broken over uh, guitar. Uh, so when to her lute, Corinna sings, her voice revives the leaden strings and doth in highest notes appear as any challenge that goes clear. But when she doth of morning speak, even with her sighs, the strings do break. So uh, when she sings, the lute sings. Uh, when she sings a sad song, the lute breaks. Uh, just with her sighs, uh, doesn't have to even do anything to it. And as her lute doth live or die, led by her passion, so must I. So I am just like that lute. When she's happy, I am. When she's sad, I'm miserable. For when of pleasure she doth sing, my thoughts enjoy a sudden spring. But if she doth of sorrow speak, even from my heart, the strings do break. All right. We won't listen to another one of these. Is that it? All right. Any questions before we get in our groups? No. All right. I need our group. Over here. Ha. Huh. All right, so I'll try what I did last time. Set up the 12 groups. Try to get yourself in your group, and then I'll come along uh, to the ones that aren't able to get in. Uh, not every version allows that. And uh, I'll put the rest in. And I'm going to stop the recording.